Tēnā koe te whare, tēnā koutou te whana o te paramata, kia ora mā tātou, tēnā tātou katoa. Members, the House has resumed. When we adjourned for the dinner break, Claire Curran had six minutes remaining to speak. Hmm. Mr Speaker. Claire Curran. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, when I was cut off in mid-flight, I think my last word was demonstrable, demonstrably. And so I'll start again with that, which is to say that it's demonstrably arrogant and out of touch uh, for this legislation to pass through the House without more amendment. And there, and, and we are the party, this party on this side of the House is the party that listened to the submitters. That is the party over there, the National Party, which is just railroaded through this legislation, which should not be controversial. It should have been a piece of legislation. It had its gestation back in the previous Labor government where, around a review that was undertaken, and there was a piece of legislation that came forward, but this government threw that out and then came back with this piece of legislation, which brings the important independent function of standards, making standards inside a massive government agency. And Mr Speaker, I want to refer to the regulatory impact statements on this. When, when we had the first reading of this bill, um, we, we paid, he, took heed of the advice that was given around this, the concerns that were are being expressed, and we said we'll vote this piece of legislation to the Select Committee, but we'll be listening very carefully to submitters because of what was raised in the regulatory impact statement. And this advice was that it said, the advice we have received suggested that overall costs of standards development can be reduced by moving the function into a larger organisation. Uh, AKA my point earlier on that, that what really lies behind this bill is cost cutting and cost saving. However, other changes to the environment we are anticipating, such as a desire by regulators to make the documents available to key users at no or low cost, may change the costs that specific commissioners of standards pay over time. Therefore, that could not be predicted, and there may not be cost savings. It went on to say, some stakeholders have indicated the risk that experts may no longer be willing to participate on standards development committees, given their perception that the independence of standards will be eroded under the proposed changes. We consider experts will continue to have incentives to participate, however, the actual impact is uncertain. Now, Mr Speaker, this has all been borne out in the select committee, uh, the su submissions that came before us. And this was a, a very highly respectable, very diverse group of submitters that ranged from uh, Water Safety New Zealand. Um, they said that industry consultation should be required in the pre preparation of the work program. Well, that um, has not been properly addressed. Um, the Centre for Advanced Engineering so we've gone from water to engineering. Um, they said that MB, as the building regulator, should not be in the business of drafting standards, many of which are building sector related. The relationships are set out in the bill between the minister, the standards approval board, the standards executive are awkward and unnatural and could easily lead to significant difficulties. I grant that there were some amendments around this in select committee, but they didn't go far enough. And the Centre for Advanced Engineering also said the removal of personally interested people and parties from the standard setting process is impracticable. Impractical. Um, the, um, also, the Electricity Engineers Association, well, they expressed similar concerns. They said uh, that um, the apparent unlimited powers of the independent statutory officer, the New Zealand Standards Exec Executive, to, among other port important functions, decide the membership of standards committees, etc., etc., decide or influence information placed before the board. They were expressing concern about independence, about bringing it inside, bringing this important function inside. And let's just remember 
uh, what some of those standards actually achieve, uh, Mr. Speaker. They set the standards for building, for buildings um, such as uh, buildings in Christchurch that were affected by earthquakes, the, um, the, uh, at, such as standards at Pike River. Uh, we're in the mining industry, standards that have real health and safety implications for workers in their workplaces, for, the, uh, for New Zealanders um, who are going about their general business and expect that, the, uh, that industries and services that are uh, provided for them have safe standards attached to them. There are too many questions about this bill. Um, there is uh, questions around uh, the independence, the conflicts of interest, the international reputation of New Zealand standards uh, as was raised by the Australian Standards Organisation. If the reason for this bill was to save money, and that's questionable about whether it will actually save money, this is actually a, a bill that needs further review, needs further amendment, and the Labor Party cannot support it. I call Brett Hudson. Thank you, Mr.